Greetings to everyone. I want to talk with you today about the amazing comet that has appeared to us who are in the Northern Hemisphere. The comet called Neowise that was discovered by the Neowise mission, which is this wide range infrared survey of objects in space. And this comet was discovered on March 27th. And it is most visible now. It has been for the last week or so and will still be visible for another week to two weeks. So if you haven't had a chance to see it and you're here in the Northern Hemisphere, go out about an hour after sunset. Look in the northwestern sky and you'll see the Big Dipper. And when you see the stars that are at the bottom of the bucket of the Dipper, look down below that in the sky and you can actually see the comet with your naked eye, which is very unusual for a comet coming into our solar system. So you can see it. It looks as if it's another star below the Big Dipper. And if you have binoculars, and of course, if you have a telescope, you can see it very clearly. But even with binoculars, you can see the comet and see its long tail. I've seen it two nights now, and it's extraordinary. And what's amazing is that this comet has a very long orbit. It's close to 6,800 years. So this comet will not be visible again for another almost 7,000 years. What's amazing about this comet is when you think about it and realize that we're a part of a conscious cosmos, that everything around us has consciousness. We're on Earth in this profoundly intense time of transition and transformation. And when you realize that everything around us on the Earth and in the sky has meaning and is a part of this cosmic consciousness, then we know that this is not random or arbitrary, that this comet has shown up and made its appearance known in this time. So what does it mean? I find it very significant that the comet was discovered on March 27th of this year, 2020, within days of the first powerful conjunction of Jupiter with Pluto. I've talked a lot in earlier videos about the powerful combination of Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter in Capricorn right now. For over a year, Saturn and Pluto have been guiding us in our awakening to the systems and structures of our lives individually and globally that are destructive, that are out of balance, that need to change. And Jupiter coming into conjunction with Pluto is guiding us into the new forms, the new paradigms that are more in balance and more supportive of who we are individually and our connection with each other and how to come back into right harmony with the Earth. So this comet was discovered around that same time of the Pluto-Jupiter conjunction, saying it's time to awaken, it's time to move into the new paradigms, the new forms. On March 27th, when it was discovered, Chiron was squaring the lunar nodes. That's such a powerful message of saying, you've been letting go of these old systems that are crumbling and are, are getting torn down around you. And you've been realizing the ways your own life is out of balance. It's time to heal. We can't move into the new change until we heal 
individually and collectively. And amazingly enough, Chiron was in the sign of Aries on March 27th, squaring the lunar nodes in Cancer and Capricorn. Astrologer Jeffrey Wolf Green talks a lot about that polarity of Cancer and Capricorn, and he speaks to it as that need to integrate Cancer, the sacred feminine, with Capricorn, the sacred masculine. We're coming out of 5,000 years of imbalance, of being in the patriarchal period, and exploring and experimenting with the energies of the sacred masculine, but we've gotten out of balance with it. When the energies of the sacred masculine are in balance, they parallel the journey of Mars, which is that if you think about Mars in its cycle with the sun, Mars moves away from the sun, it disconnects from source, it goes on a hero's journey of exploration and discovery. It comes to its opposition with the sun when it's at its brightest and it's realized the lessons that have been learned, the discoveries made, what's been, what's grown and evolved in this journey of exploration. And then Mars returns back towards source, bringing that wisdom from the journey to share with others and to come back in to relationship with the oneness of all that is. Where we've gotten out of balance in these past 5,000 years is we've forgotten that the exploration of our individuation and our uniqueness is not to get mired in ego and in this identification with our separateness from each other, from source, from the earth. It's actually meant to be a journey where we bring the gifts of that journey back into relationship, back into connection with each other, with the earth, with source. So I believe that these transits that we're in, and especially as we're moving into the Pluto square Mars transit, beginning in August, we're being called to come back into a more right relationship with the energies of the sacred masculine. Chiron in Aries, heal the way that Aries energy has gotten out of balance. And Cancer and Capricorn reweave, reintegrate the energies of the sacred feminine wisdom with the sacred masculine. The sacred feminine wisdom is that realization that we are in relationship with each other and all that is. It is that understanding that everything is sacred. And when we're in right relationship, we're in harmony with all that is. And then we're a part of a beautiful co-creation. The sacred masculine and sacred feminine are really being guided to come back into balance and integration in this time. And I think the comet is a messenger reminding us that this is a part of the process that we're in. I also think it's highly significant that if you look at the retrograde movement of this comet as it's visible to us, it is drawing a line with its movement beneath the stars of the Big Dipper. There are seven stars in the Big Dipper and it is a part of the Ursa Major constellation the Great Bear. That constellation is one of the most ancient, honored constellations here for us on Earth. 
and the stars of the Big Dipper that are part of that constellation are very significant in that they point us to Polaris, our pole star, that still point in the swirling sky. The pole star is a reminder of our processional cycle because as we move through the processional cycle and we experience the movement of the sky one degree every 72 years, which is what guides us through the astrological ages. And we're moving now from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, which means that at the time of the spring equinox, soon we will no longer see the stars of Pisces rising before sunrise, but the stars of Aquarius. So the pole star is a reminder of that larger processional cycle that we're in, that 24,000 year processional cycle. And in the Vedic texts, those seven stars of the Big Dipper were known as the seven rishis, the seven sages, the wise ones who oversee the turning of the heavens. In other words, who oversee that movement of the processional cycle. So this Neowise comet is also underscoring, reminding us of these wise ones, these great sages who are overseeing these larger cycles that we're in collectively. So the comet is calling us to remember this journey that we're in on the earth in the processional cycle and that we are at the end of one processional cycle and the beginning of a new one and we are at the end of a 2000 year age the age of pisces and moving into the age of aquarius I also find it extraordinary, and again, the synchronicity of this speaks to us of the consciousness of the cosmos. That this comet is most visible during this lunar cycle in which on July 20th, our new moon in Cancer was exactly opposite those planets, Pluto. Saturn, Jupiter, in Capricorn. Again, reminding us of this polarity, Cancer, Capricorn, sacred feminine, sacred masculine. It's time to bring these back into harmony, back into balance. That is some of the meaning of moving into the Aquarian age. It is about integrating diversity, reweaving the polarities, coming back into oneness, coming back into balance and into harmony within ourselves, with each other and with the earth. So it's guiding us and showing us that this is time to wake up. It is time to heal, to heal individually and face our own traumas, our own unresolved issues, and to heal collectively. I think it's extraordinary too in this time that we're in with the COVID pandemic and the way it's put everything on pause. It's caused us all to step back and reflect. And I think it's brought into more fully into consciousness the wounds in our global community, the trauma that's unresolved, in our systems and structures that are destructive, that are out of balance. And it's really been a time where we've all been in a process of turning inward to face ourselves and what we need to heal and resolve in our own lives. It's also significant to me that this comet is visible in the sky in this time when we are being called to heal. 
when you think about the past, last cataclysmic time of the earth changes and the earth reset was when a comet hit our planet causing the great flooding that wiped out most of humanity and the species on our planet 12,000 years ago. We're at another great turning. We're at another great time of earth reset. And this comet being visible in the sky is also trying to help us work what's in our collective DNA, our collective unconscious, that memory of that cataclysmic crisis. Because if we don't bring that to consciousness and we don't resolve that collective trauma, as Barbara Hand Clow talks about, we will then reenact that trauma on each other. And that is the path we're on right now. As an earth community, humanity is out of balance with the earth and is on a path of self-destruction. This comet is helping us look at that collective PTSD and saying, this is actually meant to be a time of transformation, of death to the old destructive patterns and rebirth into new patterns that are at a higher level of consciousness and pulling us into more harmony and community with each other and with life on this planet. So take time to go out and witness this comet and take time to reflect on its meaning, the way in which it is a messenger to us guiding us individually and collectively to heal, to awaken to the change that we're in, to remember that this is a rite of passage where we're letting go of the old paradigms that are out of balance and destructive, and we're moving into whole new ways of being that are about being able to come back into harmony and balance in our own lives, in our relationships with each other, in our relationship with all of the life forms on the earth and with the cosmos. As we wake up and heal, we're able to move into those higher levels of consciousness and remember our oneness with all that is. That is the hope of this time the promise of this time. As we awaken, we can hold those energies in our consciousness and help strengthen them in the collective consciousness so that together we can move into these new paradigms and heal and transform with the earth and co-create a new world. Blessed be.